All right, going to do a video on the sin of bitterness, wrath, and strife, showing from the scripture what the Bible says about those sins. So let's get right into it. First of all, wrath, strife, and bitterness are all wicked sins. James chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Who is a wise man, and endured, endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth from, not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Where the, where, and for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Uh, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without, par without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. First, or Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 19 through 21. Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear least when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, uh, and I would, and I sorry, and that I shall be found unto you as such such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, and least when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I will be well many which have, have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. The Corinthian church was the most carnal church in the New Testament, and what do they have among them that was carnal? Debates, envyings, wraths, and strifes, backbitings, whisperings, and swallings and tumults. So wraths and strifes are carnal. They're carnal works of the flesh. Let me show you that further from scripture. Uh, sins like strife and bitterness and wrath are works of the flesh. They're carnality, but they're not spiritual. They're not from the Holy Spirit. They're of the carnal flesh. First Corinthians chapter three, verses one through four. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you, be speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. For I, I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it; neither yet now are ye stable, are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? So they are carnal, and there is strife and division going on. It's carnality. You see, with debating and, and all kinds of arguing back and forth, it's not contending for the faith. It's being carnal. It's that simple. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 23. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witch, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and the such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is joy, or is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. But what do you have in the works of the flesh? Wrath and strife. Which would include bitterness too. It's a work of the flesh. It's a sin of the flesh. It's not listed among the fruits of the spirit. Uh, finally, wrath, bitterness, and strife are to be put off. When you put on the new inward man, the regenerated inward man. There are works of the old fleshly sinful man, but not the works of the new regenerated sinful man, or new regenerated inward man. Sorry, tongue twister. That I guarantee my enemies are probably going to take that and try to twist that too. People who just don't like me, but whatever. 
Just like, uh, like I showed in my video about the Pharisees, how Pharisees will twist your words and look for any little slip up. So those who do that are just Pharisees, as I showed in my last video. Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 to 13. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil uh, com conspicuance, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say, for which things sake, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked in some time, when ye lived in them. But now ye put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, out of your mouth. Lie, one, lie not one to another, seeing that seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, Jew, Jew, no, neither Greek nor Jew, sorry, circumcision nor uncircumcision, bi circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ's sake, forgive you, forgive you, so also do ye. So notice they have the works of the flesh listed above, which includes, uh, what, is it, what does it say? Anger, wrath, malice, you know, evil conspicuance, blasphemy, filthy communication, works of the flesh. Then you have the fruits of the Spirit. Put on the fruits of the Spirit. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Mercy is kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. It's that simple. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired right now. Didn't get a lot of sleep, so just bear with me. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 to 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister unto the grace, uh, grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from among you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. See the the bit. See there's there's what God hates. Okay, Psalms uh, Psalms five five, Psalms eleven five, you know other scriptures like that. I think it's um, I think it's Psalm seven eleven. God is angry with the wicked every day. There is uh, Isaiah chapter fifty seven verse. 21 and then Isaiah chapter 48 verse 22 where it talks about there's no peace for the wicked. Yeah, that is true. But guess what? It's God that hates them. God is a perfect hatred. See, as a carnal fleshly human, okay, even when you have when you, even when you are sowing to the spirit, you still have a body of flesh. Okay? Your hatred that you have is not perfect. God is a perfect hatred. You don't. Okay? Even when you're walking according to the spirit, you still have a body of flesh. You still have an unredeemed corrupt body of flesh. That will not be redeemed till the rapture. You can see scriptures like Romans chapter 8 verses 20, 20, 21 to 25, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 44 to 54, Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21, and many other scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 10 to 14. You have a corrupt body of flesh that will not be redeemed till the rapture. So, see, you you will have a carnal fleshly hatred. When you and when you start when you do start messing around with hate and bitterness and just anger and malice. It's gonna. It will consume you. It will destroy you, mentally and even physically too, because God will have to chasten you. But anger, wrath, malice are works of the flesh. There's a righteous anger that comes from God, but the type of anger that a lot of these false teachers display, it is works of the flesh. It's sins of the flesh. It is not uh, fruit of the spirit. I'll put it that way. I do apologize too. I again, I, I didn't get a lot of sleep, so just I'm a bit tired right now. But that's the thing works of the flesh, and when you see them being displayed, like I showed in my other video about Pharisees, you're dealing with a Pharisee a lot of times when you're seeing this type of, of this wickedness displayed. So watch out for those who display this stuff, because they are essentially modern day Pharisees. And they're displaying works of the flesh, and it shows that they themselves are very carnal. As we read in those scriptures about Paul dealing with the Corinthian church, and their carnality among them. So I just wanted to show you guys that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.